Hello everyone and welcome to part one of CSS level one. I just wanted to quickly point out in this section of the course, the notes are divided up into parts one through five and then we have a final level one assessment. Each part consists of an HTML file and a CSS file. So for example, you may have something like part one.html and then part one underscore master.css. So those two files are meant to go together and be linked together. And you can refer to the contents of the CSS level one folder for more information. Okay. Let's get started with part one, where we begin to discuss the very basics of CSS and how we can link it to an HTML file. I'm going to jump to the Atom text editor to get started. All right, so here I have my editor open as well as my browser. I've created a new folder called CSS level one, and I have two files in it, part one.html and part one underscore master.css. And we'll be typing and coding these out. If you want the completed versions, just check the CSS level one folder from the download. All right, moving along, a quick note, it's unusual to have a digit or a number inside the name of a CSS or HTML file. I'm just leaving them there so it's clear which ones match up with the course notes and parts. But usually you wouldn't actually have a digit or number inside the name of an HTML or CSS file. So I just wanted to quickly note that. Let's start off by making a very basic HTML page and then we'll show how we can link stuff in the CSS file to it. So right now I have part one.html open. I'll hit HTML and I'm going to collapse the directory of just control or command backslash there. And we'll just make this called CSS basics in the title. We'll save that. And then in the body, I'm going to have a heading and this heading is just going to say, this is the heading. And we'll have a paragraph as well in the body. And it's going to just say, let's see a list. And then let's just create an ordered list. OL where each item has a list item tag, li. We'll have item one, and let's make two more items in this list. Item two, li, hit enter there, and then item three. Okay, let's save that. Refresh our browser over here. Looks good. I can zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. Okay, so I have this is the heading. Let's see a list, item one, item two, item three. And let's, on the bottom, say, a heading four, this is heading four. Save that, refresh, and now we see at the bottom we have heading four, perfect. Now we wanna learn how we can actually connect styles to this HTML document. And that is where the head portion of the HTML document comes into play. What we need to do is use a special keyword tag called link. And you'll see as I begin to type it, I can hit enter, and I get a link here. And by default, it says the relationship of this link is a style sheet, and then we have href, which is going to be the actual path to this .css file. And in our case, it's called part one underscore master .css. And we can just use part one underscore master .css. If it was located somewhere else on my computer, I'd have to type in the whole file path or make a reference to the whole file path but these two files are in the same directory, so I can just write part one underscore master.css. And I also wanna make sure that I specify that it's a style sheet. And then I click save here, and if I refresh, I won't notice anything different, but now my HTML document is linked to my style sheet. So let's jump to the style sheet, this.css, and get started. First, let's show you the basics. If I wanna make a comment, it's just a forward slash asterisk, and then anything you type in between two of those, so then another asterisk forward slash is a comment. And just like we did with HTML, I can type some text. So we'll say some text, and then I can do control forward slash, and it automatically makes that into a comment. So you can save yourself some time there. And that also works for multi-lines. So if I have some text on multiple lines, I can highlight all of this, do control or command, forward slash, and it will automatically make that all into a comment. And it's always good to comment your code if you come back to it a later time. Now let's discuss the general form of CSS. The general form looks something like this. You have some sort of selected tag, then curly braces. Inside these curly braces, you're gonna have some property, a colon, and then some value for that property and a semicolon. So that's going to be the very basic format for a CSS file. I'm going to comment that out and actually show you an example of one. So let's think of a selected tag. If I look back to my HTML file, 
I know that I have h1 as a possible tag. So let's grab that tag by typing in h1. I put in curly brackets and I can zoom in here a little bit so it's a little clearer. And then I want a property of h1. And one of the first properties we're going to be working with is the color property. And you can see here that as I begin to type stuff in the CSS file, uh, Adam text editor is actually trying to help me out. Like, oh, do you want color? Do you want columns? Column count, etc. So we just want color. So I can actually hit enter there and it will begin uh, helping me out here with this. So I want color and then I can state the actual color I want. In this case, I want the color to be blue and then a semicolon. And you notice what happened as I was typing the color itself, for instance, purple, it doesn't turn yellow, that syntax highlighting, until it's a color that works. Now, there are actually a lot of colors that CSS already knows just by their name, things such as basic colors like red, green, black, orange, purple, etc. Later on, we're going to learn how to actually pass in color codes. But for right now, we're going to keep things really simple and just make this blue. So let's save this and see what happens when we refresh our page. And now you notice that this is the heading. Anything with the H1 tag now has the color blue. And that's the very basic idea of how CSS works. So you just have whatever tag you want to affect in the HTML, the property of that HTML, and then what you want to change that property to. There are a ton of properties you can edit using CSS connected to your HTML file. One of the most basic ones that we've covered already is color. And we're going to show you right now in this lecture various ways to change the color using not just keywords, but also codes such as an RGB code, an RGBA code, and a hex code. And we'll discuss what those are in just a little bit. But don't worry too much right now about having to memorize all the various properties that are available to you. As we go through CSS level 1 and CSS level 2, you're going to begin to naturally understand what properties you want to affect using CSS. For this lecture, all I want you to get out of it is the general format of CSS, which is the tag name, the curly braces, and then the property and what you want the property value to be, and how to link CSS to the HTML file and the different ways to change color. So we've already learned how to link the HTML file. Remember that was just this link tag. We've already learned the basic method of CSS, which is this tag, curly braces, and then property value. So let's continue to explore the different ways we can affect color. So, so far we learned that there are certain keywords, very common colors are available for us. So if I make this red, save this, refresh on my page, now this is the heading is red. So let's explore some more of this. I'm going to put another tag in, li, so that's going to affect all elements with the tag li. Remember that's item one, item two, and item three. Let's call color and let's make these green. Save it, refresh over here, and now I can see that item one, item two, and item three are green. But there are other ways to do colors. You don't just have to use color names because maybe you want your own custom color, a certain shade of blue, a certain shade of red, etc. You can do RGB codes. Let's explore a little bit more about what RGB codes look like. If I take my browser and expand it and I go to Google, then here in Google, I can search for RGB, hit enter, and I get this RGB color model. And then I can also do RGB picker. And notice that some of the top links are colorpicker.com, W3Schools, RGB color codes charts. Any of these will work just fine. We can click on colorpicker.com. And basically here we have a what's known as a color picker. So if I zoom in a bit, you may be familiar with something that looks like this. Remember, we actually saw our own color picker back when we were working with HTML. But here, you just select whatever color you want based off what looks good to you visually, and you can get the actual RGB code. And you can also get hex codes, which we're going to talk about in just a little bit. But if you notice, if we go back to Google and just search for color picker, then Google itself will actually show you uh, the values here. So. I like using Google's own color picker, so just Google searching for color picker actually brings RGB and this hex code for you, which we're going to discuss in just a little bit. But let's say I wanted a specific shade of green. I saw the basic green we had, but let's say I want kind of a more forest green, a little darker. So I come down here, I pick the color I like, 
and I note these color numbers right here. This basically is a representation of how much red is in the color, how much green is in the color, and how much blue is in the color. And that's why it's called RGB. So I can come back here, and in this RGB, I will input those numbers. So it was 8, jumping back here, 84 and 1. So 8, 84, and 1. And notice once it's complete, everything is now the same teal color as far as syntax highlighting. So I will save this, come back here, and refresh. And it might not be too noticeable on your screen, but I can see that this is a nice darker green. And just to make it really obvious, we'll come and choose a brighter color. So let's go from dark green to maybe some bright orange. So come back to Color Picker, uh, play around with this, maybe choose this really bright orange over here. That's 255970. I'll copy that, paste it in here. 255 red, 97 green, 0 blue. I will save my CSS file to save those changes, refresh, and now I can see the list items have definitely changed. Item 1, item 2, item 3. All right, let's explore two more methods of changing color. So I will grab this, let's see a list, which is, remember, just a paragraph. So I say P, curly braces, call the color property, and now I want to show you how to use hex codes. And hex codes are basically just another way of displaying the color in an actual code value. So let's make it into kind of a nice blue. Hopefully these are showing up well on your screen. So I like this shade of blue. I copy and paste this hex code and make sure it has this hashtag symbol in front of it. Paste it in here and then a semicolon to save this. And then I will come back here to CSS Basics, refresh, and now I see that the paragraph or anything with a paragraph tag has been changed to have a blue color, that specific blue that I chose. So that's just another way of coding out a color. You have RGB, red, green, blue, and you also have hex codes. Finally, I want to show you one last way, and we'll do it for heading four. And it's really similar to RGB, except it's RGBA. And the difference between RGB, which is red, green, blue, and RGBA, which looks like this color, RGBA, and then it's going to have uh, four inputs, is that RGB is just red, green, blue. RGBA is red, green, blue, and a term called alpha. And if you've done any sort of data visualization before, you'll be familiar with alpha, where the alpha parameter is a number between zero and one, where zero stands for fully transparent, and one stands for fully opaque. So you can think of that second or that last A value, that alpha value, as just clarifying how dark or how transparent this color is. So let's come back up here, choose these values, these same values, and then input, let's say, 0 0.5 for our color. So we'll save that, come back to heading 4, refresh. So we can see here at 0 0.5, the orange is a little lighter. If I go all the way to 1, and I save this, refresh here, then I can see that I have basically the darkest possible version of this RGB. It's fully opaque, and that should match up with the normal RGB. So RGBA with A or alpha being one is the exact same thing as RGB. And now if I make this zero and save, refresh, then I can see that it's fully transparent. So when I highlight it, I can see it, but with zero, it's fully transparent. So again, RGBA, really similar to RGB, except A, this last term, just defines how transparent it is, with zero being fully transparent and one being fully opaque. Okay, so that's it as far as this part one. What we've learned so far is how to connect CSS to HTML, the general format for a CSS, selected tag, property, value, mechanism, and then how we can affect colors. Throughout the course, probably the most common color method we're going to be using are hex codes. And that's probably what you see most commonly these days. You also see RGB quite a lot, RGBA. It's not very common unless you're doing a very quick website to just directly call a letter name colors like red, purple, green, etc. But for really quick jobs, you may want to do that just because it's much easier. But usually you see hex codes. Okay, thanks everyone. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them to the Q&A forums. I'll see you at the next lecture. Hello everyone, and welcome to part two of CSS level one. In part two, we're going to begin to discuss backgrounds and borders. 
We will also show you how to utilize the div and span tags that we mentioned during the HTML sections of the course, but weren't actually able to really use. Let's get started by jumping to the editor and our CSS files. All right, so here I have my browser open as well as my editor. I have an HTML file, I've called it part2.html, and I've used this link with the style sheet to reference another CSS file called part2 underscore master.css. And you can really name these whatever you want, just make sure that your link is correct. To get started, let's create a little bit of content in this HTML file. I'm going to say, this is a paragraph. And we'll also mention it's outside any divs. So outside any div container. And then I'm actually going to create a div. And a div allows us to essentially create a container. And you'll notice that as I autocomplete this, I get this class pop up. Don't worry about that for now. We're going to learn about class in a future lecture in CSS. For now, just leave it as the basic div opening and closing tags. And I'm going to make three paragraph tags inside of this. First one will say, I'm inside the div. Second one will say, I'm also inside the div. And then the third one is going to say this inside div, and then we'll use the span tag that we've learned about, and then we'll say inside span, and save that. Let's refresh, make sure everything's working. And we see here, this is a paragraph outside any div. I'm inside the div, inside the div, inside div, and then inside span in all caps. Perfect. So now we have all the content. It's time to play with our CSS file to see how we can affect that content. And I'm a little zoomed in here, so yours probably won't be as large in your browser as mine is, but this is just so you can view it. First thing I wanna discuss is affecting the entire body of the HTML. So you'll notice all our HTML content is inside these two body tags. Everything else is just metadata. So all the actual HTML content is within these two body tags, which means if I wanna affect everything, essentially, in that HTML, I can call the body tag. So that's my selected tag, and then I can affect the property. For instance, one property I can affect is the background. And you'll notice that Adam Text Editor will try to help you out with a bunch of prompts here, background color, background position, repeat, etc. Let's keep it basic and just do the background color. And I will just type in a color here. Let's type in gray as our background color. Going to save this and refresh this page. And now I notice that the entire background for everything in the body, which is essentially all the HTML content is gray. Perfect. Now let's explore the div. And remember the div allows us to essentially make these containers. So div, I'll specify the background color for the div to be something like blue. Semicolon, save it and refresh here. And now everything that was inside the div, these three lines, including that inside span, are now have a background of blue. And something to also note here, for colors, for very basic colors, it doesn't matter whether you say background-color or if you just say background. Either one of these will work. So if I save this and change this to, let's say, something like red, which is going to be really bright and annoying, so I wouldn't suggest that you do that, but there it is. I'm inside dev, also inside dev, etc. Background essentially works the same way as background color, when it comes to just uh, very basic coloring. Now let's explore how to do borders. So borders are going to require three elements to it. Basically the border color, the border width, and then the border style. So for instance, if I make a border for the div, and I say the border, let's say the border color is going to be blue. So the border color is blue. If I click refresh here, I'm not gonna see anything. And that's because I haven't defined the border width and the border style. So I need to define those two first. Otherwise, uh, CSS doesn't really know uh, how thick of a border I want be around this div. So we'll say border width. And notice that we can actually specify left, right, top, image, bottom, etc. We're going to keep things basic for now and just specify the border width. And if I hit enter, Adam Text Editor, always here to help, also says you want a thin border, a medium border, or a thick border. So we'll say thick for now. And then we'll also say border style. And the border style we'll do is something like a, let's just say dotted. So let's save this, refresh. And now you can see I have a dotted blue border around this div. Now you may be also wondering, well, what's the difference between thick and thin? So if I replace this with thin, 
save that and refresh, then I see, if you can't really see here, but if you do this on your own computer, you'll see extremely thin uh, pixels here of the border. Usually, however, you don't want thin or thick, you want to specify your own thickness. And you can do that by specifying the pixels. So I can say something like 10 px, and that will tell me that I want the border width to be 10 pixels. So if I refresh this, then I can see 10 pixels here. And later on, we'll also see how to specify pixel widths in relevance or in relationship to other elements. So you don't have to have an absolute uh, pixel. So now let's make this super thick. So I'll make this 100, refresh this, and I can see I have a really super thick. So only four were able to show up. Let's make this much thinner, something like five. Save this, refresh. And here we have at five pixels, we can do two pixels, save and refresh, and you get the idea. All right, so that was background, background color, and then the three elements you need for border, the style, the width, and the color. And it's, it's a lot of fun to play around with the styles, especially since the Atom Text Editor is really gonna help you uh, choose styles. So you can also do things such as a uh, double refresh. You can see this kind of double border. Almost looks like a uh, painting. Okay, so that was how we can affect things inside the div. Now, let's show you how we can affect text color. So if I say something like paragraph, call the color and make everything inside of this something like green, and that will affect all the paragraphs, regardless of where they are. Let me make this into a clearer color. Let's say something like yellow, and let's make this background blue and make this border color orange. That way things are hopefully more clear for you to see. All right, so what I've done here is I've changed the colors of the div background and border, but I also said all paragraph elements have the color yellow. And notice that when I say all paragraph elements, it doesn't matter whether they're inside the div or outside the div. When I call something like this, it specifically requests all paragraph elements regardless of where they are. Later on, we'll show you how to select elements that are inside of divs and also a specific element type. So maybe you only want to affect headings inside of a div or heading fours inside of a specific div. Then lastly, I want to show you the span tag. And the span allows us to grab anything within that span. So remember, it was these two words inside span. So I will call background here and say something like red. And let's give it a color of black. So now if I save this and refresh over here, I can see inside span is now background red, color black. All right, so what have we learned so far? We've learned the body, div, p, and span tags. Hopefully now you realize that you can basically call any HTML tag and start affecting its properties. The properties we learned about so far are the background, border, and color properties. Lastly, I want to show you um, another case of background where you can actually set the background to be an image. So let me grab an image. You can do this just by going to Google Images and then looking up whatever image you want. So let's say I want a picture of a beach. I can look up this. I click here on this image, then I click View Image, and it takes me to this link right here. So let me copy that full path and for background, I'm going to say not gray, but I'll actually call a special keyword URL and pass in that entire URL. So that's linking the background to this image. So now I will save this and back under CSS basics, I will refresh and we can see here we get the, if I expand this, we get that whole beach image as the background for the body. If we want it, we don't need to have it zoomed in like this we can specify various properties of this background image. Things, for instance, such as uh, background repeat or background no repeat, etc. So we can actually specify how many times we want it to repeat. In our case, uh, the background image is so large that it's not going to make much of a difference because I'm zoomed in. But if I zoom out here, we can begin to see that I have this background image. I'm zoomed out right now and I see that entire beach so if I want the background to repeat multiple times, then under repeat, background repeat, I can say repeat. Save that, refresh this page, and I can see now the background is being repeated. 
All right, so so far we have these kind of funky, uh, really 90s looking HTML sites. Uh, later on, we're going to see how we can make these into much nicer. But right now, the point is to really understand how CSS works. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to post them to the Q&A forums. I'll see you at the next lecture.